and they're, they're in the lap of luxury suddenly without any hint of taking responsibility so you do it again remember trigger behavior reward and that becomes a cycle so um god i'm totally thrown what i was going to say now because one of the things i want to cover really is how do we deal so if you know someone is in a, in a suicidal state, and it almost may sound obvious, but we probably still need to address it, and you want to support someone through it, what can you do? Because um, I, I heard a little story recently where there's this person who's suicidal, his business has gone down, his wife's left him, he's you know, lost his house, he's, you know, he's now later on in years... And he's relying on someone, and that and that other person is in fact almost feel would feel guilty if anything happened to that other individual. Mm. Whereas I'm almost thinking, actually, he's you know he's sapping him of all his energy. Um, but the thing is, I feel that first of all, you need professional help. Him, he's using him as a crutch. You need professional help. You can't look after someone yourself. Now the 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 thing to bear in mind, however is there is a danger sign for instance when say when a lady's pregnant and she's she's very she's very advanced she's got a huge tummy but just before she gives birth the baby's head drops and the tummy gets smaller in suicide people can be very very distressed until they come to the decision to commit suicide and a lot of them just get calmer so if you see your distressed friend who are you worried about suddenly get calmer and tell you suddenly that everything's okay, don't believe them. That's your start of a turn, isn't it? Eh? Don't believe them. Now, that, but that's the first thing. The second thing is, if you, in other words, still go and get help. Still go and get them assessed. Your job is their friend. You're not there. You listen to them for sure, but you're not there to give them professional help. Go straight to people like Samaritan's Mind, the GP to any of these people call an ambulance it doesn't matter get them seen by a professional so they can get the right help okay I mean in fact interestingly enough um, Professor Nutt for addictions has been looking at the use of psychedelic drugs and there's a, there's a place in the brain called the default mode network and what the psychedelic what the psychedelic drug do is reduce the activity of the default mode network because when people are in their their very negative craving vicious cycle the the default mode network is overactive and psychedelics reduce that and therefore it's it, they almost reverse post traumatic stress you out of it they make you feel so positive that everything's going to be okay so before people start going um, and start and start picking up and learning how to actually uh, go and find magic mushrooms all over the place well they're illegal they're they're illegal they're, and they're and illegal it's uh, only for research at the moment but it is a very so you can't very get it prescribed no it is a, it's a very very serious area of research and a very risk but, but professor not is is incredibly senior and a, a serious physician and there's a lot of this stuff going on um i'm a little to be fair i'm a bit skeptical i for instance the um, there's another technique simply called mindfulness and mindfulness just makes you one of the one of the uh, how shall we say the mechanisms is it it asks you to be curious uh, in other words instead of getting caught in uh getting anxious about your symptoms of craving it asks they ask you to be curious about your symptoms of craving and by becoming curious of your symptoms of craving rather than getting caught up in worrying about it it also reduces activity in the default mode network okay. and in depression if you're simply getting more and more anxious about the future and you're beginning to lose hope it would be interesting to see how you can reduce the activity in that default mode network but remember we still need to distinguish between seriously clinically depressed and those who are depressed because they feel they can't cope with their current life circumstances but remember one of the key risk factors is a sense of loss of hope for the future a sense of loss of control I'll give you an example people who are highly anxious they can get very worried about a certain stress that they're under but their anxiety is driving them. Their anxiety is there to make them do stuff. If they feel that they have no control, they won't use their anxiety anymore and they get calmer. In fact, they just get depressed. They're not clinically depressed. They're anxious people who've lost hope and those are high risk of suicide.
and they're not clinically depressed. They're just high risk of suicide because they're anxious and they feel they've lost control. So there are, there are different strategies for different situations and different diagnoses, but there is help. Go straight to Samaritans, mind your GP, call an ambulance, ask a friend to come and look to you who will then do it all for you, and things will turn around for you very, very quickly. Yeah, you know, it doesn't take much. I mean, we were talking about this before the uh, podcast started. It, it, it takes that, you know, your life can literally change in a moment. You know, and for the worse, it's just as much for the better. And all it is, you know, and I used the analogy before we started the podcast. You could go through a 90-minute football game as the World Cup is on. And it only takes that one split second where the ball's bobbled the wrong way or someone's tripped over. And it only takes one goal to change the whole outcome of the whole World Cup. Almost like the butterfly effect in some ways. So... So, yeah, by all means, go and get help. I mean, yeah, this is obviously your area. So do you want to wrap us up on this, Theo? Yeah, the, 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 the key thing to understand is that <coughs> if you're ill, <coughs> that go and get help because there's almost nothing that can't be treated and helped, either with medication or with psychological input or some kind of social input. And for that, of course, there is there's a very important socio-political issue here because the government has enormous power at its hands to improve the quality of all our lives. If you see someone who's a self-harmer and who's proven to be a self-harmer, don't respond to them, don't play their game because otherwise they'll just do it more and more. And indeed, when, when I was a junior doctor, I had to assess someone in casualty and the key thing that we had to bear in mind if you saw self-harmer was were they ill or were they not ill so this person wasn't ill they were responsible so I said you're responsible you're not ill I can't admit you so it's your responsibility to harm yourself if you do please do it earlier next time and don't wake up the poor wrong call doctor okay and in fact she took that on board she took that on board Please understand that there's lots of things that can be done and a lot of things are a matter of perception. If you're ill, then please go and get the right help. There is the help there from any number of people and you will get better. Well, guys, thank you for listening. I think we're going to leave it there for today. Um, And if you've got any questions, by all means, go in touch with us. I'm sure... uh, Theo or I can actually find you the information on whether we can actually direct you in the right direction if you are in a place like that and you don't want to talk to anybody else you don't want to talk to someone close to you and, you, and sometimes you want a stranger you know, by all means get in touch with us. And one final thing is loneliness if you see someone who's lonely, go and talk to them, because loneliness is one of the diseases of our current society and it's enormously bad for you mentally and physically Okay Thank, thank you for listening, and we will speak to you next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.